Well, we had a superb day of dressage yesterday in the Grand Prix Special. An amazing day for Great Britain, including Carl Hester, who finished in fifth place on a horse called Nip Tuck, who has got potential to be one amazing horse. Carl's inside the Riders Club. Let's go and find him. And here he is now, Carl. Great to meet you. Uh, great ride yesterday. Yeah, I had a great time out there. Um, delighted with my score. So, um, yeah, I've been really looking forward to riding today as well. I've got your routine on this laptop here. Should we take a look? Yeah, that'd be great. I'd love to know, actually, if um, my feelings match what it looks like. OK, Carl, let's fire it up and take a little look. Yeah, this was... Um, I didn't quite know what was going to happen here when I was going around the edge because I'd only just done the uh, Grand Prix, as you know, the day before, and he'd been a little bit spooky. I'd ridden him early yesterday morning so he could have another look at the ring. Uh, but, of course, I was coming to this test. You can see I'm passing the moment now where he had a jolly good spook at those two bushes on the first day, so I was a little bit cautious of those. But it'd been... It'd been um, quite an unusual warm-up because, of course, it was honking with rain. I was sliding around in the saddle a bit and, um, you know, I just normally would help Fiona and, unfortunately, she got drawn just before me. So I had uh, slightly... M I'd missed her, so I wasn't quite sure what the reaction was as she came out. But, um, anyway, of course, you have to just get focused on this. One of my best rides ever, I must say. It'd be interesting for me to see it because, you know, he didn't really make a mistake. So mm. really great to to have that test on him here. This is not my strongest movement and of course this test uh, is all about extension and collection and so anyway I thought I've got to go for it. That's one of my better ones there. Went for a little bit more uh, ground cover in it. And the first bit of this test is uh, is lovely and flowing. You know, some long lines. You can see there. I'm just setting up, just bending. I always try and think, can I see the letter through his ears where I'm heading in a half pass? Uh, that tells me I've got the right amount of bend in it. And um, better than the Grand Prix there, that half pass, more expressive. You're not supposed to slow down, that's the most important thing, really. You know, the judges are making sure you're not over collecting for the movement, you keep riding with expression, and that was my uh, aim yesterday. Now, he loves this bit, but where I have to be very careful is he's extremely sensitive on my legs. So, uh, you know, because I was a little bit sliding in the saddle, you know, if, if my leg touched him a little bit. Uh, you could see there, there was a couple of steps at the beginning that weren't entirely uh, regular the whole way through. And that's just because he was very sensitive on my leg. But this is some of the best extended trots he's done there uh, in, a, in a test. It's taken a long time. I mean, I, I am quite tall, but in fact the horse is like, you know, 18 hands. So he's one of the biggest horses here. Um, and it's a lot to uh, keep together in this test. When the weather's not 100%, does that kind of affect Nip Tuck in any way? You said mentioned you got spooked by the trees. Is the, the rain's really coming down during no, the test? No, not really. I mean, you know, the, the great thing about this horse is he actually, uh, he lives in a field most of his life because he is very, you know, he's very sensitive. And I find he's a lot better to ride if he's uh, living in a field. He, he's not quite so uh, sensitive. And uh, so he lives out in all weather. So actually for him, um, he's one of the few horses that I could guarantee would go in anything, to be honest. Mm. Now, like a lot of horses as well, I mean, he's slightly better on one rein than the other, and this rein here on the, uh, on the left rein, he's a little bit more straight, easier to ride, so he's getting uh, a few higher points, I think, on this side here. Back into my extended trot again. It's a great relationship you've got with Nick Tug. I believe you had owned him since he was one, is yeah, that right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, we found him when he was one years old, and uh, he was, oh, he was so ugly. <laughs> uh, when he was a baby, and we, you know, he was no swan, that's for sure. But um, he's grown into a fantastic looking horse, and, and it's really important, you know, what you just said there, because when you've had a horse this long, you know, the relationship is so intense, you know, he knows exactly how I ride, I know exactly how he goes, and you end up, you know, I end up covering up his weaknesses, and he covers up mine. Mm -hmm. So that's quite, uh, it's quite fantastic to have that with him. He never really was anything else. I know in the early days, you know, I mean, I've got these two fantastic horses, Vallegro and Nip Tuck, but Vallegro was always a winner, mm. and um, Nip Tuck was not always a winner. You know, when he was young, he was too big and too wobbly, and he never really featured in any, in any classes, but he always felt like he would do this level, which obviously is what my aim was for him. This is a difficult bit here, because you have to keep them really, like, sensitive enough to move into this PF, uh, and yet relaxed enough that they don't... Um, breaking the rhythm of the walk you know you can lose a lot of points there in that movement so this is you know all these things are quite hard for him because of his sensitivity and and see there had a, a again 
it's difficult when you're when you're riding it. You can feel something's going on, and you're trying to get quieter and quieter, so that he um, he doesn't do those irregular steps sometimes on the turn. But that's a little bit obviously there where I uh, sometimes move my leg a bit too much. Mm. A great score for you, so fifth place, a personal best, mm. a great place here mm. in Arkin to get that personal best. For you. Amazing. Well, you know, I mean, Charlotte and I have both had uh, experiences at Arkin that have not been, not been easy <laughs> in the past, you know, and we're both like, oh, I'm not Arkin again. Um, but, you know, both of us, I think, have put that to rest this week, so it's really important for both of us, um, you know, that we, we, we've actually come here now and, you know, we can't go home anymore and say, I don't want to ride at Arkin anymore. Because, <laughs> you know, I mean, actually, it's the best show in the world. It really is everything. I mean, you know, it's a great place to be and ride. But if you're not, or if you're always coming here thinking things go wrong, then uh, you tend to not want to come back. This is a nice move. This is really this horse is where he gets a lot of uh, his points in his canter work. He's very smooth and very easy for a big horse. And um, this was again, I think yesterday was, was one of my best performances uh, in the canter. What's it like for you as a rider being out in the middle there in that arena? There's I think 40,000 the stadium holds. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, you know, you don't know they're there. I mean, the, the worst thing about it is, of course, is if you make a mistake, uh, like in the Grand Prix on the first day, uh, you hear all the ooing and ahhing outside, and you're like, <laughs> do you not think I realised I made a mistake? You know, when you're hearing everybody go, oh, nightmare. Um, that's, the, that's the only thing that really makes me laugh really about it, because, you know, like, the crowd is so much more knowledgeable nowadays. Mm. You know, they, um, they really know that when things go wrong, it's not just the judges and it's not just you, but the crowd here is very knowledgeable and it's known for that. So um, that, that can be a little bit difficult, but I didn't hear any of that yesterday because uh, I didn't really make any uh, major mistakes, which was, which was nice. There were lots of applause at the end. Yeah, well, you know, it's great. I mean, a lot of people um, have come from England and they know, they know me and they, they, they've actually seen me with this horse coming along. We started last year at the World Games where he was really a green horse and, you know, he's just maturing a lot now. And mm. that's where I had the mistake yesterday. That's the bit I got out of the way. So from now on, it was plain sailing and I was really happy uh, looking forward to the rest of the test here. And you can imagine a horse this size, you know, like doing these small pirouettes and everything. This has been something it's taken quite a long time to teach him. So, you know, these, you know, all these difficult things are like the, the double point. So that's why it's really important that, you know, you don't make mistakes in the, uh, in the difficult movements because mm. that's when you really see big drops in the scores. How much time goes into perfecting those? Oh, years, years, yeah. I mean, you know, he, he came to Grand Prix last year as a, as a 10 year old, so that is already six years training to, to have got him to, to, to be a Grand Prix horse. Um, but then this is the good bit. Now I look at it as like, now I've got like six, seven, eight years to make it better. So, you know, this isn't generally where you finish up, this is what you start with. Mm. And, um, and now it's just going to be, you know, keep on improving. Now on the last leg of the journey, where this last bit of the centre line. He always, uh, he seems to always know when the end of the test is because he gets really uh, a lot of activity on the last centre line. And I think it's generally because the horses have all this room in front of them. So they really feel like they're forward on the last centre line. You can see this is the best passage there that I've done through the whole test. So he's really straight and forward. And you know, the things that will improve over the next few years uh, are really like to be able to get him more sitting. So, you know, you can still see there, he bounces quite a lot in the PF and he has to take his weight more behind. But he's a very long horse when you look at him, you know, they're behind the saddle. There you can see there's a, there's a lot of room there. So it it's going to take him a while to get really strong and, and get, his, uh, get his hind legs more under. At the end of your uh, routine there, you get a, a massive round of applause from the audience and the crowd there. At what point during the routine do you get the sense of this is going really well? <laughs> yeah, it's the point of where do you look at your marks and think does that <laughs> does that match what I'm really feeling? That's yeah. the um, that's the bit. And you you know when you walk out of here, you've got no idea what you've got. Mm. Uh, but I knew there. I thought you know what that's really like the best test he's done. I'm, I've got to be happy with it. And you know I am. I have been doing this sport long enough to understand that sometimes you know you get what you deserve and sometimes you don't get what you deserve. And you know you just have to accept it really but I really felt yesterday I really hope that this is going to match what I'm feeling because it felt great um, and to ride out and I just had a quick sneak behind me you know as I went out of the ring and uh, and saw I got my 77 so that was much more than I hoped for and to, to be fifth at a European Championship uh, it seems to be a placing that I quite like I've had several horses in the past I was fifth at the Olympics individually I was sixth at the European Championships in two, 2005 
and I was fifth at the Euro sixth at the European <laughs> Championships two years ago. So I'm almost fifth or sixth. So um, you know, it seems to be a placing that uh, I enjoy. Yeah.